Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kinnigan and today we're going over something really neat and it's how to bottom bounce and drift fish trout magnets for trout in small creek streams and rivers. So if you guys want to learn more about how to drift fish and bottom bounce these awesome little trout magnets, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. Oh, I got him! Oh, it's a real winner! Oh, it's a hog, you guys. Before we get started today, you guys, if you guys have never heard of us, we're Addicted Fishing. We aim to educate, entertain, and inspire anglers like you to go out and have more fun out there on the water. So if you haven't already, go down here, hit subscribe, be sure to hit that thumbs up, drop a comment below, and let's get started on what we're gonna actually do today. So what we have here is what we call trout magnets. And these are, you can use under a float, you can use any sort of way, but today we're actually gonna drift fish them and bottom bounce them. So it's gonna be a little bit different setup than what we would normally use, where they come with these little jig heads here that you see. What we're actually gonna do is rig this on a, on a leader line with just a hook so that this, this little grub floats up off the bottom and we're gonna sink it down to the bottom of the little piece of split shot. So to get started, what I have here with a rod is a Guide Select Pro ultralight rod. This is a two to six pound rod and it's about seven feet long. Anything will work for this, but an ultralight is really fun to catch these smaller trout on, so I stick with a little bit smaller rod. I have a 3000 series reel here with a 10 pound braided line, and I like to use that 10 pound braided line because it cuts through the water nice, has a ton of sensitivity, and you can actually feel the bottom, which is going to be really crucial in fishing this method because you need to find bottom and drift this along, and you don't want to get snagged, and you also want to be able to feel that fish bite. All right, so from my 10 pound leader, I'm going to go with just a plain barrel swivel. And what this is going to do is it's going to add a little bit of weight for me, but it's as, as well as going to separate my leader line from my braided line because obviously this braided line is a little bit more visible to those trout. So I'm going to take my 10 pound braided line, I'm going to run it through one side of this barrel swivel here. It's a normal fisherman's knot, seven or eight wraps. Just like so. And when tying these knots with this braided line, it can be a little slick. So what I actually do here is I run it right through the the eye that I've created there. Then I run it back through the loop that those two lines have created. And you pull it tight, just like so. Then I'm gonna take either, a, depending on your water clarity, it'll depend on what size leader line you're gonna use, but I'm gonna use a 12 pound fluorocarbon here. This is a really light fluorocarbon, but I want something that I'm gonna be able to break instead of breaking my entire setup off. I'm only gonna end up breaking just a small section of that off so I can retie and get back to fishing. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna connect that right to the other side. And honestly, a 12 pound test can be a little bit heavy for any kind of trout fishing, unless you know there's big fish around, but there might be some steelhead in this creek that we're fishing. So I'm going with a little bit heavier gauge line, plus this fluorocarbon by Tough Line is basically clear. It's hard to see anyway, so you can gauge up your line weight so that you can actually withstand fighting a bigger fish. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use just a normal number two bait hook. And why I want this bait hook is because it's got these little, it's got these little spurs on the back of it, these little barbs, and that's gonna help hold that trout magnet on there. Again, just another normal fisherman's knot here. It's a very, very basic, very easy setup. Put my tag in here. Then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add my weight. This is a number seven split shot. This might be a little bit heavy, but we're fishing some deeper pools here. We got a little bit different water. It's gonna be fast water. So here we go. We're gonna add this to my line right above my braided line here, just above my swivel. And again, that swivel adds a little bit of weight as well. So you can kind of gauge down your lead if you're gonna be hitting bottom too much. That's gonna be kind of crucial. Pinch that down nice and tight. And we're pretty much ready to go here. Now we're gonna select our color and our size of our trout magnet here. So we have two different sizes of trout magnets here, all around the same color. I'm gonna go with a natural color today, but just to show you guys, if you're, if you're fishing a smaller river or smaller fish and you're seeing that they're, you're having a hard time getting them to bite, you might wanna switch to these smaller trout magnets. But I'm gonna go with a bigger one here. I think I'm gonna stick again in that really natural color, go with one of these browns, because a lot of natural grubs and, and stone flies and different stuff, it's springtime, it's summertime out here. So there's a lot of insect life, there's a lot of stuff coming off of the rocks and hatching. So we're gonna go with a nice brown color here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread this on just like you would a normal worm. Just like so, right through the top of that head. Put about, I don't know, about a half inch of that on there until I get to that tail. Pull it through and feed that all the way up to the eye of your hook. 
just like that. And you want this thing to be sitting straight like this. If it's cockeyed, if, it, if you didn't get enough of your hook in it and it's kind of sitting off and weird, it's gonna be necessary to take that back off, slide it back through and actually get that thing on there straight so that it has that natural presentation like a grub as it goes down the river there. So here's our setup, we're ready to go. Step over to the river with me and we're gonna show you guys how to fish this. So first and foremost, for drift fishing or bottom bouncing, you're gonna to wanna to find something with a moving current. And why you need that moving current is because you need that drag from your line and that current pushing down river to drag this presentation along the bottom. If you're in a, in a spot that's too stagnant and too slow, you're not gonna be able to drift fish. You maybe will just downsize your weight, but then again, you're not gonna be able to cast this very well. So we have a perfect run for drift fishing right behind us. Nice little cascading waterfall right down into this pool and a nice steady current all the way through that pool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get down here. I'm gonna start down river just a little bit and I'm gonna cast up into the current so that my presentation has time to sink, get down under that current and sweep it down river towards the tail out of the run. What we're gonna be doing here is fishing small little sections. You want this to get down fast, fish a short window where you think those fish are gonna be and then you'll bring it back in. So let's get our first cast started here. And go up into the top, just like that. And what you wanna do is you keep your rod tip at a 45 degree angle over the water and you're gonna follow your line down the entire time. I'm getting swept by the current pretty good there, but what you wanna do by keeping that rod tip pointed at your, at your presentation and at your line the whole time is it gives you a lot of sensitivity through the line into your rod tip. If you keep your rod in one single direction and that line swings across, you have no sensitivity coming back to your hand through that braided line. So again, I'll do that again for you guys. Up river at about a 45 degree angle, up into the top of the run, letting it sink, bail, bails close, and I'm just gonna wait for it to hit bottom and slowly, again, just follow that thing along, letting it drift along the bottom, just like so. You want this to have a very natural presentation. You have to imagine just a plain bug or, or a grub floating down the bottom of the river. It needs to go the same speed as the current and it needs to be down towards the bottom where that stuff's gonna be getting pulled down by the water current. I'll do a couple more here. We made about five or six good casts through there. We worked from close to far, and we worked our way across the run, covering that little pocket that we know is in front of us here. Now that we've done that, and we've covered that water effectively, I'm gonna start switching colors up a little bit. So I'm gonna stay in the natural realm here. I'm gonna take my brown off, and I'm gonna go to a straight black one and do about three or four casts. And you can kind of work through the motions there. You can, I mean, really kind of jump around in that color sequence. The black's gonna have a good profile. Maybe the bugs they're eating today or that are hatching are a different color, like this color black. Next, I'm probably gonna go to the chartreuse, maybe over to the clear. We'll see how it goes as we keep going here, but I'm gonna go to the black one this time and make a couple casts. Just like so. And we're ready. That was a bite. About it. Oh, I got him! Oh, it's a real winner. Oh, it's a hog, you guys. Look at that cute little thing. Little cutthroat trout there. See, he's got that red on his gills. But there it is, you guys. He's down there feeding. He's down there trying to find him some food, eating the most natural presentation. So you saw how that color change worked. I drifted through there about four or five times, of course, with that, with that brown one. But just that little color change is what they wanted here. So let's put our little friend back here. See you later, buddy. All right, let's keep giving that a try. I think there's bigger ones in here. I hope so, at least. Now, it was interesting. As soon as I switched to that black and I got that first good cast through there, I got bit right at like a quarter way through the drift. And as that swung across and I went to start reeling in, we got that little cutthroat to bite. So that little color change seemed to do the trick. We'll just keep doing that, keep changing colors and see if we can keep getting them to bite. So one thing I want to touch on really quick, you guys, is your weight selection. You can see I only have that one number seven on here. And what you want to do is you want to start light. If you're getting whipped through there and you're not getting down underneath that fast current, if that's the kind of run that you're fishing, you're going to want to start adding split shots. But here, I started hitting bottom right off the bat, but keep a couple of those split shots in your pocket or in your trout magnet box. And if you're not getting down fast enough, that's when you're going to start to add weight. So you're going to just kind of go through the motions there, start light, go heavier, and again, get as natural a presentation as you can with that little trout magnet. Now I've made those couple casts, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna switch my color up. Take the black off, 
I can see some bigger fish in here, so we want to try to coax them into biting. Now we're going to go with something a little more flamboyant. Obviously, there's not too many pink bugs in this world, but we're going to throw on the pink this time, go to a completely different color phase, something a little more iridescent. And what I will say, one thing I'll comment on is when you start switching colors like this, really be prepared on that first couple casts. Because a lot of this is having that slightly tight line, being able to feel the bottom, and then again, being able to feel the bite is what's very crucial in drift fishing or bottom bouncing. Because you need to be able to have that sensitivity. That's why I'm following my, my line with my rod tip the whole time. So that through that rod tip and through that 45 degree angle, I can feel that bite and I can set that hook. Because a lot of times with these trout, they're moving around, they're grabbing their, their prey, their, the bug, spitting it out and then going back. So if it's something they don't like, you want to be able to set that hook fast enough to keep them on there. But always be prepared on those color changes on that first couple of casts. Be ready for the bite. There he is. Oh, yep. First cast. First cast with a different color again. We got hammered there. Let's get it back in there. Went a little bit further this time. I'm gonna let it fall right through there. That felt like a little bit better of a fish. There was some weight behind it that time. So you can see towards the end of the drift there, I'm kind of lifting my rod tip up and down. And why I'm doing that is I'm feeling for the bottom. I'm not necessarily trying to give that bug any action, but I'm lifting it up and down to make sure I'm not hitting bottom at the end of that drift where the current slows down so that I'll snag up at the very, oh, oh, there he was again. Darn it. All right, we're on them though, guys, we're on them. We got their number. But before I change, actually, I'm gonna step down in here, try this last little part of this tail out that I'm not getting through. Just like that. Oh, this is the money zone. I can feel it. So I'm liking this angle down here a little bit more. Normally, I wouldn't want to... Oh, I swear I'm seeing fish in here, you guys. Normally I wouldn't want to cast too far up river when I'm doing this, but I'm using the perfect amount of weight in this hole and it's keeping me from getting snagged. So what I can actually do now that I've worked my way down, I started at the top of the run, worked my way down to the tail out. I'm going to start casting all the way up and getting a little bit different presentation, getting a little bit more of the whole fish each time I'm drifting through there. I'm going to go to the yellow this time. Now you guys can kind of see the importance of that 10 pound test too. You want something that's not going to be floating too much that's gonna get down underneath that current, but as well, it's not gonna be too visible to those fish. Oh, oh. Well, yellow is not the color to switch to. It's the only time we didn't get bit on the first cast. Go through here a couple more times with it. And we're gonna try one more color, and then we're gonna move on to a different hole. So now we're gonna change colors one more time. Got this iridescent gold one, nice and sparkly in the sun. I'm gonna add this guy onto my line here. Give it one last little color presentation, then we're gonna start moving through the water that we have down below us. Okay, there we go. Ooh. Kinda got pushed through there a little bit quick there on that cast. A big boil pushed me up. Didn't quite get down deep enough. Okay, so before we leave here, one thing that never hurts, we're going back to Old Faithful Pink. Back to the OG Pink here. Give it a couple more casts, then we're gonna move on down. All right, so we've beat up this hole pretty good, you guys. We're gonna walk on down the river. There's a nice little pool just below this. Go on down there. Basically, what you wanna do is you're trying to effectively fish all this. Start at the top, close middle far, close middle far, two steps, two steps. If it's a small hole like this, I don't have to move very much to cover the whole thing, but try different angles. Again, try different colors, and now let's go try another hole. All right, so now that we've got down to this next hole, you guys, you can see it's a little bit different style. Again, really fast current at the top, but one thing I want to touch on a little bit is to be stealthy when you're creeping around these clear waters like this. Granted, if you can't see the fish, odds are they don't really see you either. So try not to cast a shadow, try not to make too much movement on the bank as you go down to make your first cast. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna sneak down. I'm gonna fish this one a lot differently. I'm gonna stand at the bottom and actually gonna cast straight up river, let it get down to the bottom and drift fish it right past my feet so that I'm getting down in that deep pocket that we have just below this ledge. Just like so, I'm gonna go straight up. I'm gonna let that go down. Again, following it the entire time with my rod tip. I'll let it swirl down into this deep pocket, give it a little bit of line, set my bail open. You gotta imagine, it doesn't always have to be a perfect drift with these trout magnets. 
This is a, oh, there he was, dang it. What we're trying to emulate here is like a natural grub floating down the river. So it'll get stuck in those little vortexes and in those little back eddies. So be sure to fish it through there. You're not technically fishing this the same way that you would with a salmon and steelhead drift fish setup. So you want to work the water and be versatile in how you're working it by fishing those little back eddies, fishing that fast water. And then again, letting it sit down there in the current as long as possible at times. Now you guys can see now how I'm systematically fishing this. Started at the top, making good casts, making sure I get good presentations through there. And I'm taking two steps after about every three or four casts. That way I'm covering the water. I'm saving myself some time by sitting there casting off the same rock. It's always a bad idea to stay in the same spot all day, especially if we're looking for these wild trout like this. You want to cover water, you want to find the biting and feeding fish, and then you want to move down to your next option. All right, everyone, that's how you drift fish and bottle bounce with these awesome little trout magnets. If you guys like what you saw here today, go down here and give us a thumbs up and drop a little comment below with whether or not you've ever drift fish or bottom bounce or ever use these trout magnets in general. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. We really appreciate it. You guys stay fishing, we'll see you out there.